All right, let's talk about the scapula and answer the questions, what is the scapula? What are its primary bony landmarks? And what are some reasons to learn about it? Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Morton and I am the noted anatomist. So to begin with, the scapula is also known as the shoulder blade. So if we now take a look at the surface anatomy, we see these two bones that are flat and irregularly shaped that kind of look like a shovel. So the scapula has the following bony landmarks that we are going to cover now. All right, so let's get started. So anatomist said, what do we call this border of the scapula? Well, it's on the medial side of the bone. So let's call it the medial border of the scapula. It's also the border that is closest to the vertebral column. So we'll also call it the vertebral border. Well, what about this one? What about this border? Well, it's on the lateral side of the bone. So why don't we call it the lateral border of the scapula? It's also the border that's close to your armpit, so we'll call it the axillary border as well. So the next one is going to be seen in this superior view of the right shoulder, and that fossa is what anatomists wanted to name. And a fossa is a shallow concave surface. And they said, well, what do we call it? Well, it's on the deep surface of the scapula, right against the rib, so why don't we call it the subscapular fossa, the prefix sub means deep like a submarine goes deep to the water. Subscapular fossa is the deep surface of the scapula. And so here in its anterior view, it looks like that. That shallow concave surface on the anterior surface of the scapula. And here we have the subscapular fossa and we can see it right against the rib. So it's also called the costal surface of the scapula, but subscapular fossa is what's usually used. And anatomist said, well, what do we name this muscle that's coming from the subscapular fossa? And they said, I know, we'll call it the subscapularis muscle. To talk about the next structure, let's take a look at this picture of Athens in Greece, this beautiful ancient city. And on the outskirts of the city is shing, they call it the Acropolis. And it got its name because in Greek, the prefix akron means highest or the summit and polis means city, which basically means it's the highest part of the city. And here's a picture of Selene and I circa 2011 in Athens. And why am I showing this? Only because it looks really cool. And it was 11 years ago for me right now. I was thinner and this is before COVID when we were traveling. That's it. And I also got a chance to go by Mars Hill that was fantastic. All right, so here we've got an anterior view of that structure. And anatomist said, well, what do we call that structure? Well, it's the highest point of the shoulder. And so they said, what is the word for highest? Well, in Greek, it's acros. And what is for shoulder? It's omos. So they called it the acromion, the point, the highest point of the shoulder is where it got its name, just like the Acropolis. And so there is the acromion in this anterior view. And then there's the acromion on the posterior view of the scapula. And so when we're looking as a bird's eye view, that's this flat surface and it's quite large. That is the acromion. And the acromion also articulates with the clavicle. And so between the acromion and clavicle is a joint. And so they called this joint the acromioclavicular joint, abbreviated AC joint. It's a synovial plane joint. And this is really important because this is the strut joint where the clavicle articulates with the scapula and it allows you to move your arm up and down. And the clavicle and scapula are able to move that so your arm gets so much mobility. The next structure is this one, all along the back of this ridge of the posterior uh, portion of the scapula. And an Adam said, what do we call this spiny-like structure? this spine all along the back of the scapula. And they thought, this is easy. We'll just call it the spine or spine of the scapula. And it's important because that spine of the scapula has uh, the trapezius muscle that anchors to it to help give support to the scapula and move it, as well as the deltoid that anchors to it that helps to move the humerus. And in surface anatomy, that's what the spine of the scapula looks like. It's just kind of funny because out of all the pictures, this is the one that I found. It's pretty cool looking. All right, so there's the spine of the scapula. Next, anatomist said, well, what do we call this fossa above the spine? A fossa is a shallow concave surface. So this fossa is on the back of the scapula, but above the spine. So they called it the supraspinous fossa, literally meaning the, the fossa superior to the spine. And what about this one? Well, this fossa is below the spine. 
So they called it the infraspinous fossa, the fossa below the spine. And so there's the spine of the scapula. And they said, well, here's a muscle that is in the supraspinous fossa. What do we call it? I know, the supraspinatus muscle. Well, what do we call this muscle in the uh, infraspinous fossa? They called it the infraspinatus. This is the benefit of being able to know the names of the bony landmarks because if you know bony landmarks, it helps you get an idea of why muscles get their names. So here in this, this anterior view of the scapula, there's this socket on the side. It's called a socket because it articulates with this ball, the head of the humerus, and they go like this, shing, they come together and they make a ball and socket joint. So an anatomist then said, well, what do we call this the structure, this shallow, smooth structure on the side of the scapula, they said, well, why don't we call it the socket? Well, what's socket in Greek? Well, it's glenoid. So this is called the glenoid cavity, but because it's not very deep, it's more shallow, they call it the glenoid fossa as well. And glenoid fossa and cavity both go together. Um, now, this tubercle that's above the glenoid cavity, like, what do we call that? Well, let's call it the tubercle above the glenoid cavity supra glenoid tubercle. And a tubercle is a bony prominence for usually a muscle or ligament attachment. And the supra glenoid tubercle articulates uh, or attaches for the long head of the biceps brachii muscle right there. And so what about this tubercle below the glenoid cavity? Well, let's call it the tubercle below the glenoid cavity, the infra glenoid tubercle. And this is important because this is the landmark, or this is the bony prominence where the long head of the triceps brachii muscle attaches. What about this process? A process is a bony landmark, a bony sticky outy, if you will. Well, what do we call this? An anatomist said, you know what? That kind of looks like a raven's beak or a crow's beak. And what is that in Greek? It's coracoid. So they called this the coracoid process. And this coracoid process is important for muscle attachment. In fact, three muscles are pectoralis minor and short head of the biceps muscle and the coracobrachialis all have attachments to the coracoid process. And in surface anatomy, uh, it's a good landmark to be able to palpate. You find the clavicle and it's right below the lateral third. So it's right there is where the coracoid process is in surface anatomy. So now let's go to this notch. Well, what do we call this notch? Well, it's on the top of the scapula, so why don't we call it the suprascapular notch? So there it looks like in an anterior, and there is the posterior, anterior and posterior. And on the suprascapular notch, we have a ligament called the suprascapular ligament that goes across. So you have the suprascapular artery that goes above the ligament, and then through this newly formed foramen, we have the suprascapular nerve. There we have a posterior view, and there's a lateral view, posterior lateral, posterior lateral, and let's take that lateral view and blow it up, and let's do a little quizzing, shall we? What do you call this border on the lateral side? It's the lateral border. Well, what do we call this fossa on the lateral surface? Well, it articulates with the head of the humor, so it's a socket, so it's called the glenoid cavity or glenoid fossa. Well, what about this bony sticky outy that looks like a crow's beak? Oh, what was crow's beak? Oh, that's right, coracoid process. Well, what about this surface, the anterior surface? It's a fossa and it touches the ribs, subscapular fossa. What about this bony prominence? It's the highest part of the shoulder. Remember Acropolis? This is the acromion. And what about this bony ridge? It's a spine. They call it the spine of the scapula. And then this shallow concave surface above the spine, supraspinous fossa. And the shallow concave surface below, infraspinous fossa. And that, my friend, is the scapula in a nutshell.